your Airbnb has been reserved for December 24th, 2023 through December 26th, 2023. Thank you so much. The key code will be emailed to all parties involved with this reservation. See you in sunny LA. Hey hon, Mark must have finally booked that Airbnb. I just got the notification. I'm sure you did too. Oh, let me check. Hopefully he included all of us on the booking. I'm sure he did. But, you know Mark. I did know Mark, sometimes unfortunately. But, for the most part, he's been a great friend to my wife Suzanne and me. I'm sure he did. He put my email down, obviously. So yours should be there too. Just in case one of us arrives before the other. Or, whatever... I don't really know the process. I've never gotten one of these rentals before. Gonna be exciting, I said, not giving it much more thought. Well deserved, Sue said. We haven't taken a vacation on Christmas ever, something I've always wanted to do. Tony always shot the idea down. Travel is too stressful during holidays. We have family to see here. We don't have the money, blah, blah, blah. I grew up loving those movies where Christmas took place in a tropical location. We both grew up in the Midwest, so Christmas always looked like Christmas here. Which is fine. But I always wanted to be sitting under a palm tree sipping a drink that had to actually be made and not from a beer can. Finally, after saving, for nothing in particular, I convinced Tony we had to stop delaying and just go. I would love to see Christmas in Hawaii, or better yet, Fiji, or even Bora Bora. But we don't have Hawaii, Fiji, or Bora Bora money. My husband spent some time in California when he was younger and still won't shut up about it almost 20 years later. That was my in. I casually brought up how nice it would be to go to Hollywood for Christmas, maybe get a nice hotel somewhere in the hills. Seeing his eyebrows raise and his pursed lips in the shape of an O, let me know I immediately convinced him. L.A., here we come. Well, would you look at that? I got the reservation details too, I said, showing Tony my phone, like he could see from across the living room. Your shit he... Sorry. Recovering addict friend did remember to put our emails down. What a guy. She knows Mark has had his issues, but he really has tried. And him and his girlfriend have been some of our closest friends for our entire relationship. I know Suze and him have their differences, but when he initially brought up the idea of going on a couple's vacation, I thought it was sweet. And she's always wanted to go tropical for a Christmas. I thought it was a great idea, honestly. And the fact we're going to LA is just a cherry on top. I still think of that place from my youth. I would have gone with Hawaii, but this will at least be a shorter flight. Be nice, please. He's not the same guy you knew when we first started dating. And look at the initiative he took by booking this trip all by himself, I said, trying to remove any tension before we even started vacation. It's a four-bedroom house, so if you don't want to be near him, You've got plenty of options. Hell, we could all have our own room if we wanted. Tony is always so cute when he tries to play peacemaker. Always looking on the bright side. But he's right. I'll do my best to play nice. I won't even see him beside maybe going out to eat. I'll be eating up that December sunshine that I have never gotten here. Two weeks later... From the renter of your upcoming Airbnb, included in the following message are instructions to access the key to your property, as well as a set of general rules instructions during your stay. Thank you for using Airbnb to book a more comfortable stay. Hello. We're looking forward to providing you all with a very relaxing holiday vacation. Usually we would just send this to the person who actually booked the rental, but we've found that another party may arrive earlier or the original enter may arrive late due to travel issues. Well, 
Tony said. I was kind of right. We all have access to open the place. That's good. Shh, I said. I'm trying to read the rest of it. The code to the lockbox is 5221. It's December 25th. Backward, you know, Christmas. Just trying to get everyone in the holiday spirit. Anyway, the actual key will be inside the box once unlocked. The house rules will be on the kitchen counter immediately when you enter. It's all very standard and quite simple. A very quick rundown will be as follows. 1. No peeking. 2. Clean up after yourself. 3. Keep the exterior doors locked at all times. Tony and I look at each other for a moment. What does that mean? No peeking? Must be some kind of Christmas thing. It looks like the owners are very into this time of year. Oh, there's more. A full list of rules will be on the counter, as we said. We only ask you follow them to the letter. Otherwise, enjoy the warm California air while you celebrate the holiday with friends and family. We've left a complimentary bottle of champagne in the refrigerator. We hope you enjoy your stay, and please leave us a review once your vacation has wrapped up. Get it? Merry Christmas. All right. A little much for me, but whatever, Tony says as he rubs his temples. Pretty sure booking hotels never goes quite like this. I think it's cute, Suzanne smiles. Loosen up, it's Christmas. Speaking of which, has Mark reached out to you yet? Are we meeting him at LAX before we go to the house? Tony shoots a confused look at her. Here we go, she thought. Only two weeks until vacation and still as stressed as ever. We're supposed to start getting into chill mode. Oh, oh yeah, Tony almost shouts, putting his right index finger into the air. He said that him and Marley could only get a red eye the night before our flight. Wasn't to clear on why he didn't book when we did. But, so... They will be arriving first and opening up the house. I think that'll be perfect. Let them get in, settle the place, and we can go shopping for food, drinks, whatever else we need. Damn, she needs to lighten up. Always so stressed. I'm pretty sure I already told her Mark and Marley were going to be there first. Oh, well, that's fine. I guess, Sue said trying to hide the urge to say more. December 24th, Los Angeles, California. Mark said the place looks great. He said the pool is perfect for us four and even got the hot tub started. That's gonna feel so good, Tony said. Suzanne, throwing the 30 pack of bush light that him and Mark had to have, makes her way to the passenger seat. I thought Mark was in recovery. Tony, now firmly piloting the Honda Accord rental, flies down the 101. Oh well, he was never really in recovery. He's had his moments, but he can have one or two these days. Beside, I haven't seen him in forever, just want to have a few with him. A few, Sue says, looking back toward the case that contains 30 shitty beers in the back seat. Tony laughs, shrugs his shoulders, and presses on. We'll be there in no time. I wanted to be there at the same time, Sue thinks. Not quite sure why. Mark? Marley? We're here... Hello? That's weird, Tony says. Maybe they're out back. I'll go check the pool. Can you put our drinks in the fridge? Before Sue can respond, Tony's already bolting over the living room couch toward the sliding door the pristine blue pool water waiting on the other side. Whatever, she says, maybe a little bit too loudly. Oh, the rules. I totally forgot about these. Tony, get in here. After a few moments, Tony sauntered in. What was the yelling for? I wanted to find Mark. No. Are you okay? No. Is everything okay? Bite it, Sue. Just bite it. Look. She directed Tony's gaze to the kitchen counter. 
The standard 8x12, paper-clipped white sheets were right where the owner said it would be. And the first rule was indeed there. Rule number one, no peeking. Tony, now realizing the eccentricity in this, matched the seriousness of his wife. What the hell? Sue shook her head, looking around the kitchen. How she missed it the first time, she'll never know. There was a small envelope stuck to the fridge with a holly berry magnet. Not the actress, the Christmas plant. One could assume this was a Christmas card. She slowly opened it. A jolly-looking fat man, dressed in red, holding a snow globe. So be good for goodness sake. Her bed. A gloved hand coming from underneath the bed, unsheathed from a red sleeve. He sees you when you're sleeping. Both Tony and Suzanne had a hard time grasping for the right word. What could you say? How utterly bizarre this is. How the card doesn't even make sense. Under the illustrated bed was an even smaller note. Welcome, stranger. We're sure you came across the house rules. You probably have a few questions. How can you look at them when it says no peeking? There are three sheets, not including the one the no peeking order is on. You may remove that now. Read the first page today, the second page on your second day, and the third when you are leaving. Enjoy your stay. Tony immediately runs to the front door, locking it from inside. What did you do that for? Sue asked. I just... that email jumped into my head. I remember the no peeking, totally forgot, and the second or last thing was lock all doors. Tony was losing color in his face. Oh shit, you're right. I completely forgot. Thank you. You try to get a hold of Mark and I'll read the first sheet. With that, Tony pulled out his phone, wiped his brow, and sat down on the living room couch. Any luck? Nothing. Hasn't picked my calls and no answer to my texts. None of them appear to be read either, Tony says in a worried tone. Okay, this is weird, yes, but it's nothing sinister, Sue. Get it together. You know tuned up. Tony will only get worse if he sees that you're upset. I read the rules for page one while you were trying to reach Mark. I think it's just a silly game, Tony. I really do. There are only four rules, and three of which we already know. Sue reads the first page aloud. Welcome again to our home, made for you during your stay. Again, no peeking. We do not charge a cleanup fee, one of the few Airbnbs that do not. However, we ask that you keep clean, out of courtesy. Here are the main rules for your stay. Rule one, you already know this one. Rule two, clean up after yourselves, which you also know rule three. Lock all exterior doors when you are home or out. Rule four, do not go into the basement. That is off limits and is locked for a reason. If there are any concerns for anything else, please contact us with the number we have provided. Hot tub instructions are posted near the pool, by the bar. See? That's it, Tony. Nothing to read into. Oh, sure. The fact these weirdo people told us no peeking five times doesn't ring any alarm bells, Tony spat. How about sleigh bells? Sue said, cracking a thing-lipped smile. The couple both burst out into a duet of relieved laughter. The perfect dumb joke at the best time. Come on, it's Christmas Eve. Let's make a drink. I'm sure your derelict friend and his da, uh, whatever she is now, will be home any moment. Mark was, is your friend too, Sue. Don't be so hard on him. But you're right. Ah, when you're right, you're right. Open that champagne. We have more, Tony said, smiling. Tony, bleary-eyed, jumped up from bed, expecting to finally get a call from Mark. What the fuck? It's seven o'clock at damn night, 
Tony almost dropped his phone. Sue, now also back to the land of the conscious, looked at her husband incredulously. What? How did we sleep until seven? I don't even remember falling asleep. I... Oh. Oh my goodness, my head. Feels like Christmas gnomes are drilling into my skull. Or all the toy makers are working overtime in there. Wait. It's Christmas. Merry Christmas, honey, Sue said, holding her forehead. Merry Christmas, Tony replied, still staring at his phone. I don't get it. That was my alarm that woke us up. I don't remember setting it for seven. Why would I? I'm going to check the house. Maybe Mark finally made it and can explain this. I need to check the second rules page, too, Sue said. Hmm. Nothing looks disturbed. Clearly, we've been stood up by Mark and Marley. Not surprised. At least this is on his dime, so we won't be charged. I don't even think we should pay him our half for going through this. The rules pages are where I left them. The no peeking page turned over, and day one's page right where it was yesterday. Day two. What? Tony, I need you to get in here. Tony stumbled in, still a bit woozy, still holding his phone and in his boxer briefs. I just wanted you in here while I read the second page. I don't know. It feels like we need to both be here. Sue looked at Tony, hoping he wouldn't argue and just kept his mouth shut. A silent nod let her know he understood. Good. Okay. Day two. You. There's a red stain on this page. I can't even make out the words under... Yuck. What is that? Sue says out loud, daring to briefly touch it. Her face recoils at the texture. Yeah, I know. I saw that yesterday, Tony said, physically putting a mouth to his face immediately. You saw that yesterday? Sue said, her eyes narrowing with every letter spoke into the universe. Fuck. Why did you say that? Why didn't you keep your stupid mouth shut? Now, she's going to make a huge damn deal out of nothing like she always did. There's nothing even written on that page. Not that you can make out at least. Who cares? Sorry, Sue, I... Well, yes. Yes. I flipped over the first and second page while you grabbed the Christmas card from the fridge. Big deal. It's just a dumb game the owners like to play, just entertainment. Tony did his best to convince Sue it was an innocent mistake. No. Peeking. It said. How dumb are you? Don't answer that. How dumb are you? Tony said. Believing in a stupid children's line that... Shh. Suzanne put a finger to Tony's lip. In a hushed tone, she looked at him. Is that footsteps? Tony, looking at Sue saw more whites in her eyes than he has seen in their life together. What? What is it? Tony asked. Sue shook her head no, tears now forming. Sue, calm down. I'm sure you're hearing or seeing. Lock all exterior doors, Tony. You didn't even bother checking for a back door. Run. Without hesitation, Sue grabbed Tony back toward her. She noticed there was a side entrance when they entered, assuming maybe it went to a laundry room or some kind of storage room. The body attached to the voice they just heard was now trouncing toward them. With one last leap and a shove to get Tony into the room, Suzanne slammed the door shut, locking it. Just a moment after, a massive slamming noise hit the outside. What do you want? I have my phone, asshole. I'm calling the police. Tony said, unlocking it. It said no peeking, Sue said, giving Tony a punch in the chest. What the hell are we doing? What are you waiting for? Call the police? Why are you just staring at your phone? Tony, hurry up. We... I don't know if you've noticed, but we're in the middle of a home invasion. Call LAPD. Sue, Tony said. Mark text back. Not really a priority. Not really a priority right now, sweetheart. Call the... Splinters of wood crashed through the storage room they were in, a gloved hand now attempting to open the doorknob. 
Keep it together. He's useless right now. Think, Sue, think. How can we... The basement. Mark, I think that's the basement door behind us. Hurry. The rules said not to go down there, and it said it was lock... Oh, now you care about the rules. Get the hell down there. Can't believe it wasn't locked, Tony said. Now what, though? That creep will be down here in seconds. So incompetent. Give me your phone, Sue said, snatching it before he had a chance to respond. Before she could open the keypad to dial 911, she froze. Tony had Mark's multiple text messages pulled up. Can't even follow simple rules. Eh, Tony? No peeking. How hard is that? No peeking, leaving me at my darkest. You and that awful wife don't know how you live with yourself. Never follow the rules. Never get in trouble. Tony, what is this? What is this? Sue said, dropping his phone. Like you'd care. You always hated Mark. And let's be honest, you don't even like me anymore either. Let alone love. Feelings mutual. But I'm not dying with you. I can tell you that... What? Oh, nothing, I don't know. Mark's clearly gone off the deep end again. Give me my phone so I can call the police. I hear him trying to open the basement door. Sue picks up the phone, buzzing in her hand with a new text notification. Hope, you enjoyed the complimentary champagne. Has quite a kick, doesn't it? That door is going to crack, Sue. Give me my phone or call the police, now. She'll find out what you did. The last thing those girls all heard. Sue grabbed her mouth, both cheeks ready to fill up, trying wildly to ignore the bile coming up from her lower intestine. What? Tony? What did you do? She said while her shaking hand held out his phone to him. No peeking, 